Okay, so we have to now obviously come to action plans and the biggest one has to be on caring for the vulnerable. Vulnerability has a definition, there is a quanti quantitative metric which depends on you know, gender, socioeconomic status, income, the housing you have and so on and education and so on and so forth. We call on all countries and communities to protect the most vulnerable people from the impacts of extreme heat, reduce extreme heat risk and build their resilience. These are words we use very commonly, you know, risk, vulnerability, resilience, but no, they, they need a metric so that you can actually track. When you say build their resilience, are you sure your actions are building their resilience? So you need to track them, right? So that's always important. Monitoring, verifying, reporting always matters. Uh, what are the main points? Adopt evidence-based policies, regulations, and multidimensional risk assessments and community-driven actions to protect the most vulnerable. So what is risk? IPCC defines it as the uh, multiplication of hazard, which is the extreme heat in this case, vulnerability, which I already mentioned, exposure, which depends on population density, infrastructure, access to hospitals and other things. And now there is also response. So if country has a good disaster response, extreme heat response, then obviously that reduces your risk as well, right? Keep that in mind. Enhance social protection schemes to integrate specific measures, measures that help address the risk of extreme heat. Establish and bolster heat early warning systems. This is my favorite one because a lot of the climate scientists who keep talking about how bad climate impacts are, uh, we all have to worry about spending more time on producing early warnings than to keep telling people that things will only get worse because if 23, 24 was really bad and we say we must prepare, then we have to give information on when this may happen again and in your neighborhood how it may look like because no weather event really repeats itself exactly the same way. So how do you find the resources to actually prepare at local scales? That needs these kind of early warnings. That is our main job and not to keep scaring people. So I'm just kind of complaining about that. So strengthening capacities of national meteorological and hydrological services would be critical. I've covered this topic elsewhere also you can look up. Increase equitable access to and scale up low carbon cooling, invest in the triple strategy of passive cooling, improved energy efficiency and phase out climate warming gases used in cooling equipment in line with the global cooling pledge at COP28. Okay, so you can read the details here on how to do these in terms of uh, passive cooling, uh, energy efficiency and phasing out of climate warming gases used in cooling equipment. There is some technology transfer and so on needed. There is already, you know, Montreal Protocol focused on CFCs, then Kigali Amendment uh, is focusing on other refrigerants and replacing them. So uh, developing countries like India get, I think, out to 2035 to replace their uh, cooling uh, refrigerants and so on. But uh, there are many options already available, organic ones and not non-greenhouse gas ones and so on and so forth. Uh, call to action on extreme heat then. Uh, this is the same that we are talking about in terms of caring for the vulnerable. Uh, strengthen health systems and operationalize heat health action plan to prepare healthcare professionals to diagnose and treat heat related conditions and provide quality care during acute emergencies. So even if you have very good early warnings, uh, how to uh, translate them into such specific actions on heat health action plan is not easy. You need extension agents and so on. Social science, so all the impacts and actions are social science. That They are not so much uh, STEM, uh, you know, so social science is very critical. Develop and implement targeted public education campaigns. Awareness always helps. In India, for example, vulnerability is greatly reduced when women have education of even fifth grade because they respond better to early warnings. Develop and expand international, regional and national financing mechanisms to support early response to heat waves with a focus on ensuring that resources reach the local level at the right scale and at the right time which again depends on early warnings 
right it's crisis management in many ways but can you then use that to build resilience as well to seek so the i have this under adaptation course on my channel where we look at how international aid can uh, often you know conflate development uh, projects with adaptation plans and heat wave action plans and so on so it's always important to make sure that everything is getting addressed invest in preparedness for early locally led humanitarian response to severe heat waves so these are kind of extension agencies NGOs uh, private sectors and so on playing a role improve standardized surveillance and reporting of heat related morbidity mortality and injuries this is very important because attribution and further improving resilience and protecting the vulnerable depends on doing this properly so heat related impacts are significantly underreported in all at risk populations <coughs> worldwide excuse me okay so protect workers uh, we call on all countries to protect all workers in all sectors through appropriate occupational safety and health measures based on a rights based approach implement urgent measures to protect the health and lives of all workers in all sectors and in all regions of the world from the risk of extreme heat through a rights based approach okay so these things should be a basic right that you are protected against uh, heat extreme heat and so on right and urgently review the laws and regulations on occupational safety and health to integrate provisions for extreme heat including the right to refuse and additional protections for vulnerable workers including pregnant workers and those with disabilities and those with pre-existing health conditions this is not easy when you have outsourced business you know china is producing a lot of things india wants to produce a lot of things for the rich world and obviously there is a lot of uh, informal work settings where such protections are not easily implemented or implementable and policies governance issues exist and so on tailored strategies for different sectors uh, and both indoor and outdoor workers should be developed and implemented again this comes to very effective uh, governance policies implementation and also enforcement a lot of rules may exist in the book but unless they are uh, enforced it's not going to work so tailor strategies that are practical and low cost should be made available for informal settings so where workers have to be protected and micro small and medium sized enterprises what are often referred to as msmes in uh, 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 acronyms improved surveillance and reporting mechanisms for morbidity and mortality are needed regarding heat stress in the work for uh, workplace so things like esg environmental societal and governance uh, requirements compliance requirements include collecting such data and of course there is DEI diversity uh, e equity and inclusion which is indirectly related to the same thing as well in terms of employing uh, people who need employment and are not part of the mainstream ethnic minorities religious minorities gender etc and inclusiveness has to be part of the overall protecting of workers right so boost resilience of economies and societies using data and science so heat action and cooling plans develop implement develop and implement comprehensive risk informed heat action plans and cooling plans in all countries and all sectors stress test the heat resilience of current policies targets uh, legal and regulatory frameworks and operational practices and protocols these are very uh, true motherhood statements how to actually make them happen uh, is always important science and data ensure standardized reporting of extreme heat risk and impact data to better manage the overall risks leverage the innovation technology and diversity of the private sector to manage extreme heat risks build resilience of the built environment and critical sectors to extreme heat we already talked about it a bit so here develop short and long term measures to reduce extreme heat risks and strengthen heat resilience to reduce societal and environmental vulnerabilities including critical infrastructure not 
least energy transport agriculture water health and education system so all of them have to be uh, included appoint champions or create a dedicated government department or office that has a cross sectoral heat resilience mandate this is tricky and important because many times uh, the ministries work in silos so whether it's adaptation mitigation or specific heat extreme heat action plan there are always the need for these uh, cross sectoral uh, communication sharing of finances information personnel and tools and so on and so forth right so uh, ministry of environment forestry climate change finance buildings infrastructure energy they all have to kind of work together to make sure that the last mile uh, protection of the vulnerable doesn't fail because of communication across uh, ministries okay so uh, limit to, uh, temperature rise to 1.5 degree c yeah maybe i should just read this off as well as i said 1.5 degree c is not scientific but nonetheless having any target to uh, aim for 1.5 degree c by 2100 with a 67 percent probability there is somebody standing here and uh, doing some uh, idling but I can't do much about it hopefully the sound is okay every fraction of a degree warming matters but local hyper local information of the impact of global 1.5 degree C or exceedance is very critical by early 2025 under the Paris Agreement every country must submit a new nationally determined contribution that is 1.5 degree C aligned and economy wide providing absolute emissions reduction targets for 2030 and 2035 covering all greenhouse gases and all sectors so countries are revising NDCs already and monitoring reporting and evaluation will become critical again turbocharged measures to phase out fossil fuels easier said than done but many countries including China India and so on are implementing renewables for their own energy security and economic development take urgent measures to cut super pollutants or short-lived climate pollutants short-lived as they say in the US emanating especially from the cooling sector prevent dumping of new inefficient equipment that uses obsolete refrigerants finally finance is critical to raise ambitions on mitigation and enhance adaptation measure this is very important as I mentioned these have to be mainstreamed into budgeting and fiscal policies and it's not always uh, easy for developing countries key focus area of COP29 will be on finance with countries expected to agree on a new collective quantified goal NCQG collective quantified goal to succeed the uh, US 100 billion climate finance goal we need an outcome that builds trust and confidence catalyzes the trillion uh, trillions of dollars needed and generates momentum for reform of the international financial architecture I'll come back and close out on uh, strengthening global action on extreme heat some resources provided here that will be a short one but I want to leave it as a separate podcast okay so let's come back and close it out <laughs>